Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. So, yeah, I think there's something wrong with this Les Paul in this box. <laughs> I saw that pop up on Reverb one night, and it's like, I've been waiting to review and document one of these things for a while. It's just, you know, waiting for the right one at the right price, at the right condition for documentation. And I decided, let's go ahead and do this after we get this outside of all the packing peanuts. All right, here we go. This is really heavy for a Les Paul, which probably means this is a Costa Rican made Gibson USA case. But before we dive too much into the information, let's go ahead and check this thing out. What makes this thing weird? You saw it in the thumbnail. Oh, that is, that is so wrong. That's so wrong, but I love it. <laughs> It's a, a a 12 string Les Paul standard. What what is not to love about this thing? It feels ridiculously neck oh my. Oh, see, when I bought this, I didn't actually get to see the neck and it's flamed. Oh my goodness. That is just a fantastic added bonus. Like, I think I remember vaguely being able to see it, like, at the bottom portion of this. Like, I was just scared that it'd have, like, a headstock repair he wasn't talking about. But a flamed maple neck, heck yes! Let's learn all about 12-string Gibson guitars today. All right, so when you normally think about a 12-string guitar, what comes to your head? For me, it's all about Rickenbackers. They dominated that market back in the 60s. You can check out my review of a 12-string Rickenbacker here. They've kind of got one of them interesting headstock designs. Instead of giant headstock like we've got going on here today, they have small headstock with tuners on the side and the front. A little bit confusing to know which is which, but, you know, you, you get used to it. It's an interesting design. But when it comes to 12-string Gibsons, what, what do you guys think of first? I think EDS 1275. That's the double-neck SG type body shape guitar. Those were first introduced in 1963 in the solid body format that most people know about today. There were hollow-bodied versions before that, though, for a couple of years. And then, of course, Gibson has 12-string acoustics. I don't really pay much attention to acoustics, but here's a cool SJ200 in a 12-string variation. But what about just single guitars with 12 strings on them from Gibson outside of acoustics? Here's your options. In the 60s, there was actually a 12 string 335 that Gibson actually did reissues of not too long ago. Or you could find a Firebird 12. And those things are kind of interesting because look at their headstock. They have a cool double triangle inlay on their headstock that's all rounded off. Kind of reminds me of like a custom emblem on a Les Paul Customs headstock. But in the very late 60s, you can also find the SG body styled Melody Makers in a 12 string variant. But moving into the 70s, it's just kind of more of the same stuff as far as the double necks go and various acoustics. When it came to electrics, they didn't do too much. But if you're still craving a Gibson with 12 strings, you could check out the 2011 50th anniversary SG that was a 12 string. That thing's kind of cool because it's got the special 50th anniversary logo on the headstock that Gibson used on quite a few models at that point in time. But then one of my favorites that I still want to review and document is the 2016-2017 run of neck through single SGs. Those things look so weird and bizarre, but it's, it's like a mix between a Firebird 12 and an SG. It, it, it just works. And don't even get me started on 12-string Stratocasters, because that's a whole different other brand. <laughs> But in that 2010s era when Gibson was like, let's let's start doing these things for single bodied guitars, you have this. This is a Les Paul traditional 12 string. And if you don't know what a Les Paul traditional is, that was the standard when the standard was the modern <laughs> to put it into modern day specs. So these were built to, you know, more slightly correct 50s specs outside of like the custom shop historic division. So that means we have just nine hole weight relief on these guys instead of the chambering or the ultra modern weight relief. But, you know, as, as far as a traditional guitar goes, <laughs> it's not very traditional being the 12 string. And the big thing that they changed for these guys and the fact that, you know, for added strength to the neck, having so many different strings on it, they put a maple neck on these. So as far as the Les Paul traditional goes, I mean, it's not very traditional, but it's one of the more collectible traditionals from the Gibson USA lineup. There's pretty much a big five when it comes to Les Paul traditionals. The ones I like best anyways are obviously the 12 string because 
obvious reasons. It's just goofy looking. <laughs> but then there's a split coil P90, which I'm assuming they're just tapping them. I just want to try one of those things out. There was a rose gold colored one. Like check out the rose gold SG video if you want to kind of understand that one a bit better. But then there's also a mahogany stained version and one that just has a straight up mahogany top. I would love to document that. And then for you crazy Floyd guys out there, there's also a Les Paul traditional with a Floyd rose on it. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But anyways, the Les Paul traditional was introduced, you know, around 2008 when they started to do all that chambering to the standards. And it kind of existed until 2019 when, you know, the original collection came out and they didn't need the branding traditional anymore. So first impressions of this thing is that is a really ridiculously heavy neck on this thing. And it's so strange seeing a maple neck on a gold top. It kind of reminds me of like a gold top deluxe from the 70s, but yet it's very modern day looking. But the body feels, you know, a relatively lightweight, whereas the neck is just very heavy and dense. But I think most of that comes from the tuners. Like we've got the mini Grovers on here, likely to reduce some of the weight on this. But it looks like this will definitely need some cleaning up. Unfortunately, I, I don't think I have 12 string strings, so we're, we're just going to have to use these old ones, unfortunately, but got to give this a strum. And apparently a tune. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and uh, see if we got any cool case candy. Looks like regular stuff here. That's definitely a Costa Rican case. Yep. You can tell just by the interior how it's kind of like a off-white smoky-esque color and looks like another owner's manual here all right strap in it's time to throw this thing on the workbench and take an individual look at its parts and specs inside the 12 string les paul traditional you know just in case you don't like gold tops with the natural backs there were two other colors offered in this limited edition run that was done between 2011 and 2012. you can find a cherry sunburst and a straight up ebony one that's also black on the back i always kind of imagine myself documenting a nice lovely flame top version of one of these but you know gold top's not too bad and historically i think it pulls off the maple neck look better but anyways, let's go ahead and learn about the specs. These did ship with pick guards from the factory. Unfortunately, this one does not have it. But you can see the paint's kind of like bubbled up right there. I mean, it's not too crazy, but it looks like a lacquer check line, essentially. As far as pickups here, we're rocking a 57 Classic in the neck and a 57 Classic Plus in the bridge. So that'll just be a slightly hotter 57 Classic which we can demonstrate here with readings from our output jack. 8.05k ohms in the bridge, neck position 7.84, so you know, just, just a little bit hotter. Then our middle position is around 3.97. As far as the body routes themselves, they look pretty clean, but this is still a short neck tenon. They didn't upgrade it to a long neck. It's a Gibson USA product, and as I was telling you earlier, it has nine hole weight relief, but still has the maple top that most Les Pauls have. You can see that pretty clearly right here, and then the mahogany body. But now where things start to change from tradition are our bridge and tailpiece. The bridge, well, I guess it didn't change that much. It's just the irregular PW branded one, except for every saddle is double notched because you have double the strings. Now, in case you don't know what a 12 string guitar is, it's kind of an octave guitar. So your top two strings, they're just doubles. So it's the same note on each string, but then your bottom four are octaves, an octave lower and higher on each of the four strings. So you know, it kind of gives you a, a wangly jangly tone. It's really good for clean. I guess there's some guys that use them for doom metal as well. <laughs> you could do a lot with the 12 string guitar, but typically they're used in clean style music just to really give it an interesting chime. Think 60s music. If you've always wondered what made those old records sound so interesting with the guitar parts, it's because of 12 strings. But now get a hold of this bridge. It appears to be full weight and it looks just like a regular bridge, but you get down here, ah, oh, the holes are doubled up right there. I mean, that's what you would expect a 12 string guitar to have, right? But I've just never seen it on Les Paul styled hardware before. That's cool. And something else that's kind of a miracle is the finish is still over top of the studs for the tailpiece. Normally those will crack and fall off because there's not supposed to be paint over top of there. So that's actually a good thing that that hasn't chipped or anything like that. You don't see that too often. But the story behind this guitar was the guy bought it for his studio. 
never ended up really using it. That's pretty evident by its condition. I'm imagining he was by salt water though. And you know, the air had some salt in it because pretty much on all the chrome parts, you can see some pitting as they like to call it, especially right there. You can see it on the bridge. We'll see the same thing with the tuners. They've got some pitting to them. Now, at the end of the day, I think the only part that'd be hard to find a replacement of might be the tailpiece. Everything else is, you know, very easily, readily available to swap out if the next guy desired to do that. However, I don't know, I might have to keep this one. The neck is so cool. As far as the knobs on this one, we've got the golden speed knobs, two volumes, two tones, one for each pickup. Not too much more to say about this piece. It's just a nice looking gold top. So moving on from that mahogany body and maple top, we have the one piece maple neck with a rosewood fretboard. Now the frets definitely needed some cleaning on this. It's just 22 medium jumbo style. You've got your acrylic trapezoid inlays. The fretboard was looking a little bit dry, so I decided to condition it to give it back its luster. It needed some cleaning and the frets polished up. It looks good now. But the side profile view of this is so strange. The cream binding kind of matches the color of the neck. So it's it's just kind of strange. You don't see that on modern day Gibsons as often. However, I guess we can't call these modern day Gibsons now. They're Henry J era Gibsons, despite what, almost being 10 years old. But here's the nut. You can see it's double slotted for all the strings. Otherwise it's the same nut you'd find on other things. But let's go ahead and grab our dimensions. Looks like, ooh, 1.75 inches at the nut. Intriguing. I guess it makes sense having a 12 string, you'd need a wider neck, but 2.1 at the 12th. Some guitars are even wider than that, that are six strings. So maybe that's why this feels so different. It's got a really wide neck to it. I mean, that's like 2015 Gibson specs. <laughs> First fret neck depth, we're rocking 0.82. That stays very consistent by the 12th, 0.87. So a slim 60s neck profile on these guys. Here that is at the first fret and the 12th fret. You can really see just how wide that is. Nice. Moving on to our headstock. Obviously it's elongated. <laughs> then you've got your uh, truss rod cover here. It's just your standard one that reads traditional. And thankfully our truss rod is looking okay on this one. Maple necks tend to not have to be adjusted as much. So that's probably why they swapped these over to maple. But you've got your Gibson logo up here and Les Paul model all the way down there. I kind of wish they would have did these 60 style like triangle inlays. That would have been pretty cool on these. Maybe Gibson could do that in the future. Cause let's face it, not, not everybody wants a 12 string Les Paul, but there's enough people that are like collectors or like the, you know, just the, the, the strange nature of it <laughs> that they could probably do a limited run every 10 years. How many of these did they produce? I didn't ever see official numbers, but generally in this time period, they would make about 400 limited editions. So that's probably spread out across all the colors would be my guess. Well, I got it all strung back up. So if you ever have strings that you want to just get a little bit more life out of, uh, Fender sells these things. I know there's another company, I think they call it Fast Fret. Essentially, you pop off the top and it's got like a, kind of almost like a lemon oil like material to it where you just take it, you rub it against the strings and it just wipes off all your dead skin cells and whatnot. It keeps your strings fresher longer and you know, for being as not as nice as those strings were, it, it turned out pretty okay <laughs> until I can get those other ones in. But that should get us good enough for this demo. But let's say you're like, hey, I don't need a 12 string. Les Paul. You could just be the freaky guy who strings this up as a six string, takes off all the other tuners or just don't actually string them up. And you could play this as a six string. And it, that would actually be kind of interesting because it'd be like you're increasing how much string it is. So like sometimes people will move their tail pieces back in order to make the strings feel a little bit slinkier. You, you could get a very similar phenomenon if you just use the top six strings to, to put them into there. Because <laughs> it'd just be extending your string length. I mean, you could also just string it up like normal and just have this weird stuff. But yeah, if you want a, a Les Paul that nobody else has, you, you could just string it up as a six string if you really wanted to. Just an idea I thought I'd throw out there. But let's go ahead and swap over to the backside of this thing. So it looks like a two-piece mahogany back. It's got some decent figuring. 
And, you know, being on a display stand for people to pick up, it had a couple of nicks and dings on the back. I'm not seeing anything too crazy, but, you know, just some light wear and tear. I'd say this one right here is probably the worst ding on the entire guitar. But even that kind of just disappears when you're not looking for it. But being a traditional, this didn't have any of the PCB systems like that they were starting to do around this time. This has hand-wired pots, Gibson branded, all's looking good in here. The output jack cover is a little bit cracked right here, as is common on these plastic ones. And you've got your strap buttons in our regular locations here. It even has the thin binding in the cutaway, exposing the maple cap right there. Also condition-wise, it almost looks like there's like a strange grain fill underneath the finish right here. I know it looks like a blemish, but it doesn't feel like one. So that is there. This is a very nice looking guitar from the edges. I like the wood grain that it has. That's cool. But speaking of cool wood grain, here it is. One piece maple neck. You know, normally Gibson doesn't do just straight up one piecers. They normally have the walnut lines running through it and making it a five piece neck in total. But this is one of those ones where they just do one piece and it's beautiful. This is not a spec. Not all of them have flame maple necks. This is just the luck of the wood grain lottery for this example. It's an extraordinary ordinary one. Pretty cool. But they didn't put a volute on these or anything like that, and once again, we've got our mini Grovers that have some pitting to them. And up here, stamped Made in USA 2012, and it reads 2012, 240th day of the year, initial batch, production number 535. And yes, this does have the two wing pieces, but they match pretty well. But wanna know what's really cool? These wing pieces have a lot of wood grain to them. Like, I love the side profile view of this thing playing it. It's got a lot of wood grainage, and it's got a little bit of flame dancing as well. That looks really cool when this thing's strung up on a strap. As far as the black light test on this 12 string, everything's looking good on the front. Headstock hasn't been snapped off or anything like that. Sides look good to me, as does the back, but I did find something on the neck. Just two eyes, I guess. Must have been some sort of a guitar stand that only came in contact in two points. Luckily, you can't see that in normal lighting situations. But everything is good on our headstock. I thought for sure we would see a stand rash on the headstock area. Not there. But the question I think everybody wants to know, how much does this thing weigh with this giant maple neck on this thing? Let us find out. Oh, huh. 10 pounds. I mean, that's not crazy for a Les Paul. I mean, there's some Norlin era ones that weigh a little bit more than that, but I mean, this thing feels like nothing I've ever played before. It's it's really stiff feeling for a Les Paul. Like I'm normally used to them kind of being slinkier, but of course you got double the strings and the maple neck, but it's it this is quite the interesting experience to play this thing. But let's go ahead and do just that and grab some tone samples. Let's go ahead and try this 12 string Les Paul out. You know, the more and more you play it, the more it starts to become comfortable because it's like, okay, it's just a Les Paul body shape. I was sitting down playing this for about an hour. You kind of grow accustomed to this giant headstock and the whole maple neck situation. But I've come to really appreciate this neck pickup. So let's just go ahead and do some chords. <laughs> Positions extra chimey.
it's amazing just how doubling your first two strings creates such a different tone. I mean, it's the same string. But played together, sounds like this. Interesting. I don't think I would play this every single day, but you know, just to have it. <laughs> it feels nice. I suppose I could try to figure out what to do with some distortion. Probably not how you're supposed to use a 12 string, but I'm having fun doing it anyways. It's hard to do galloping triplets on two strings at the same time. <laughs> Now that we know all about the Les Paul traditional 12 string, what are my final thoughts on this thing? Not something that I would necessarily play every single day, but something just to have within the arsenal of different tones. I think that's exactly who this is for. I mean, they're not 
unreasonably expensive. Now, if you want to buy this one for me, yes, I'm going to be unreasonably expensive because, ah, yeah, I just fell in love with this neck. It's nice. So I think I found a very good example of one of these. Now, as far as the tones, I thought it sounded like a 12 string. <laughs> I know Rickenbackers are mainly what people think of, but why not, OS Paul? Surprisingly enough, though, it's not neck heavy. It is neck heavy, but it's not neck heavy. It's surprisingly well balanced on a strap. It's pretty cool. Overall, I would say it stayed in tune pretty good considering the age of the strings. And once again, I think it'd be a lot of fun just to string this up as a regular six string just to get people's reactions of playing this giant Ed Stock Les Paul. So I had fun checking this out. It's definitely not for everybody, but you know, they're little rare oddities as of right now. So thank you Troglodytes for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. As always, if you're interested in being the next owner of one of these demo guitars, you can check them out on my website, troglisguitarshow.com. There's some links in the description.